Hey guys, today we're going to shake down this brand new 2022 Polaris Ranger XP1000 Trail Boss. Stick around, you're watching UTV Underground. <laughs> All right, if you're watching this, chances are you're doing some shopping for a new utility side-by-side -side, and you're combing over all the prices, the specs, all the machines that are out on the market right now that feature a dump bed, a winch, lock and ride type accessory system, or more. We're gonna cover all that, but before we get into the details of this machine, if you're new to our channel or you want a quick history lesson on the Ranger, check out our 2021 North Star review where we dive deep into the legacy and origins of this humble little hay hauler. You'll see why the Ranger platform has been the backbone of the Polaris brand for over two decades. It's pretty damn impressive. This 2022 Ranger XP1000 Trail Boss is technically the 23rd model year for the Ranger. The Ranger XP1000 line was introduced in 2018 and it received outstanding reviews when it launched especially in the Midwest because of the increase in power, torque, and towing capacity over its XP900 predecessor. Despite the fact that the specs seem to be the same and the appearance hasn't changed too much for these machines, they have received some notable upgrades for 2022. We'll get into those in a minute, but in terms of the XP1000 Trail Boss lineup, these 82 horsepower machines are available in ghost gray and come in both a three seat and crew size configuration. They have tons of accessory package options for hunting, winter work, extra lighting, and kick-ass audio. In fact, it's now easier than ever to put the right accessory package together right on the Polaris website or at a dealership and tailor build these machines to your need. A few months ago, Polaris shipped us a brand new zero mile Ranger XP1000 Trail Boss. We parked it next to our old 2008 Ranger crew and man, you can see a difference 13 years makes. The 29 inch eight ply pro armor tires and 62.5 inch wheelbase have really improved the look of these machines over the years and they seem more capable than ever right from the dealership. Gone are the days of bringing them home and thinking about aftermarket wheels and tires or suspension work for greater clearance. Polaris has really nailed all of that. The Trail Boss does not come standard with the winch like the North Star does, but it's equipped to receive one if you need it. When you take a gander under the machine, you see there's 14 inches of ground clearance, which is four more inches than the days of old. It's an inch more than most of the other Ranger models too. And just like the North Star and other editions, you can load a thousand pounds into the bed, which by the way, has been tweaked to hold five gallon buckets, has tie downs for all of your tools and has a myriad of lock and ride accessory options. Using the dump feature is a breeze by the way from either side of the machine. But what really stands out for this model are things like the engine braking system and active descent control the dual LED headlamps and tail lamps, the arched A-arms, the Nivamat self-leveling suspension, and the 900 watt high output stator, all of which are designed to help get this Ranger off the farm and on the trail. This is a high-tech pack mill, folks. Every element of the exterior of this vehicle has been carefully designed, updated, and upgraded for maximum comfort, workability, and longevity. And to top it off, like all other Rangers in this class, this machine has a very usable footprint. It's nimble enough to maneuver around smaller trail systems and at home on your property, but doesn't feel tiny or cramped when you're inside on longer rides or sitting three wide. There are a few things we'd love to see added to the exterior of these machines, especially if we're really gonna go after the trail riding crowd. First, we'd like to see some AC power options while the machine is running. The bigger stator should be able to handle that. We'd also like to see some DC power options in or around the bed of the machine too. And all the lower storage nooks in the dash are great, but you guys know, on the trail, everything gets super dusty. So we'd love to see that entire dash filled up with sealed compartments like the upper and lower glove boxes, which by the way, we love. Now, if we're talking a truly trail ready machine, 
we'd like to see poly half doors and a windshield added to this model in the future. Sure, you can add all that for a few grand to complete the build, and we do give Polaris big points for getting 90% of the way there with the roof, but to protect everybody from the dust and the dirt you experience on the trail, you really need those items. We should also mention that when you build out a trail boss, one of the cool features of the Polaris website is seeing the different accessory collections that are available. They range in price from just under $2,700 to nearly $5,500 and cover all you ranchers, big game hunters, craftsmen, and even waterfowl folks. The only other exterior feature that needs work is the bed latch. It's just not as functional as it should be at this price point. Based on our research, this has been the Achilles heel though of every manufacturer, not just Polaris. Everyone seems to struggle with the bed latch. The Ranger XP1000 Trail Boss has a 999cc four-stroke twin cylinder engine with dual overhead cams. It's the same tried and true electronic fuel injected 82 horsepower motor and automatic high performance on-demand all-wheel drive transmission that Polaris has had so much success with this past decade. Most of the competition in this category is at or near 82 horsepower. Polaris though is offering things like engine braking and active descent control in this model that the competition currently doesn't. We'll get into how the engine feels in a minute, but just know that this machine has plenty of power and is very responsive. Its number one competitor currently is probably the Can-Am Defender XMR, which now has the Ranger beat on things like ground clearance and tire size, 30 inches versus Ranger's 29 inches. And the XMR does come with a winch, but there are a lot of extras on the Trail Boss that come with two decades of building these machines. Can-Am's only been at this since 2015, so that's something to keep in mind. Utility UTVs aren't really the suspension masters that their sporty brothers are, but it is worth talking about suspension for a minute. To make the Ranger Trail Boss more trail bossy, Polaris equipped it with independent arched lower A-arms in the front and rear of the machine as well, and Nivamat load adaptive shocks in the rear. What's that mean? Well, Nivamats are self-leveling monotube shock absorbers, which utilize the movement of the vehicle between the chassis and the body to create mechanical energy. They are typically mounted in the rear of the vehicle and are self-contained, meaning they have no air compressors or airlines. All of that is to say that Polaris has really thought out what it would be like to carry heavy loads down a trail with this machine. The combination of the 29 inch tires and the 14 inches of ground clearance really make for a comfortable and usable ride. One of the most overlooked and underrated features of any utility side-by-side -side is comfort. Polaris has put a lot of effort into the Trail Boss cockpit. The adjustability of things like the seat and the tilt steering are the first things you notice when you sit down. It can be tough to see guys who are pushing 300 pounds and well over six feet tall, yet somehow Polaris has done that. The overall seat comfort and storage are great. There are nice sight lines, it's really comfortable steering wheel size, it's just a comfortable car to sit in. The premium cut and sew seats feel refined yet durable, and the premium steering wheel and interior accents are a nice step up from the base model Ranger. Personally, if we were hitting the trail with other groups, we would immediately add Ride Command and an audio package. At $1,600, Ride Command is not a cheap add-on, but if your buddies are rocking it, it's a must-have. The 300-watt overhead audio visor speakers by MB Quart sound fantastic and are very reasonably priced. This model does include the Polaris Pulse electrical system, standard in-dash SAE charge port, and 900 watt high output stator. So it's set up to add light bars and all kinds of cool LED add-ons, all made much easier with that high output stator. Without that, you might need a second battery in the mix for this kind of stuff. We've been using this machine for months here on our ranch and out in the wild to suit a whole variety of needs. Everything from hauling trailers, stone, hay, and wood around the yard, to loading it up with hundreds of pounds worth of equipment and crew to get our guys out to film spots in the woods and the desert. This rig worked the 2021 Mint 400, did multiple film shoots after that, then worked the 2022 Mint 400 in March. 
We've used it the past few months to pre-run our newest race, the California 300. In all, it's been well over a thousand miles of abuse and only in the most extreme locations on the Mint 400 race course did we ever come across ruts or G-outs that were too much for this Ranger. 95% of the time, we had plenty of clearance and power to get through anything in our way. We've loaded the Trail Boss bed to the hilt with luggage, coolers, camera gear, and all kinds of coursework equipment and driven for hours through sand, silt, rocky washes, and up through narrow canyons. And here's the thing, out on the trail, what the Ranger lacks in speed, it makes up for in power and utility. We've towed multiple cars out of the desert with this baby, and it's so much easier to get access to things like coolers and equipment than our sport UTVs. It's really the equivalent of a high-tech pack mule that carries all of the important stuff we need to actually survive. We use it to carry gas, spare tools, tires. It has room for all of that, freeing up space on our razors. We did miss the ability to use Ride Command with the group since they're outpacing us, but at nearly $4,000 less than the North Star Edition, we get why that's not included. With an MSRP of $22,799, the Trail Boss is neither the cheapest nor the most expensive three-person Ranger in the Polaris arsenal or on the market when compared to other high-end utility machines. But it has some amazing features that really set it apart from the competition while it's out there on the trail. So what's the verdict on the new 2022 Ranger XP1000 Trail Boss? We dig it! Polaris has been perfecting this platform for two decades and the fact that they are making a model aimed at the high-end trail market is awesome. We're excited to see where they take this idea. Hopefully in the future we'll see some overland features that come standard like extra power options, a windshield, and other cool ideas. But here's the thing, if you're looking for something that is a comfortable workhorse and adaptive to many situations, you found the right machine. The Trail Boss is a perfect heavy duty solution for farms, factories, race support, hunting, camping, and yeah, out there on the trail, as well as a million other scenarios because it's so versatile. So do yourself a favor, get on down to your local Polaris dealership, take this thing out for a test drive, and you may find yourself soon in the cockpit of the all new Ranger XP1000 Trail Boss. Well, that's it for all of us here at UTV Underground, guys. Please hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you guys out there on the trail. Thanks.